So, yeah, we live in an apartment complex of Toronto now. Oh, we're recording. Yeah. Oh, shit, that's going to be in. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> um, we're in Canada. Yeah, that happened. Mm-hmm. And so there's been a bit of a hiatus the last year and a half, two years. Yeah. yeah. But got a lot of fun things in store for you people. That's how long it takes Jeremy to move. Yeah. We've got about six different podcasts that have been recorded and never edited. Yeah, do we? Yeah, actually. Oh, that's exciting. I have a lot. Love to hear what they are. One of them is called Canada. <laughs> Can we post it with this one? Of course we did. <laughs> sort of um, before and after the the bright shiny illusion one and then the kind of the dark disillusion smashing arches one. Technically, the last podcast was called Cabana, because I spelled it wrong. <laughs> and we have a kitty up here. Yeah. Yeah. We have a cat now. Her name is Milkies. So what have you been up to, Mr. Nate? Oh, well, um, if you if you wish to ask that question in certain environments, you might say, what have you been up to, Mr. Nate, PhD candidate in urban planning? That's, that's what I've been up to. That's, that's the reason we're in Canada is I'm doing uh, yet another degree up here. Yet another degree, comma, gotta, up here. Got to catch them all. Um, uh, next on the list is the postdoc. And then the post-postdoc, and then the space doc, and dry doc. <laughs> that's, that's retirement? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Very glad to be out of a basement apartment. Um, we're now living the high life on the uh, 14th slash 15th floor here in lovely Parkdale, Toronto. So um, <clears throat> from our apartment, we not only have roaches, but we have a view of the lake and we can walk to the beach. We have very few roaches, though. We have about one, uh, two a week. Yeah, that's not a roach problem. No. That's... Oh, I'd hate to see what a roach problem would be like. I think a lot of people in this apartment building have a lot of roach problems. I think a lot of people in this apartment building have a lot of problems. <laughs> I think a lot of people in these apartment buildings are roaches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have to have, like, tenant security by now. Um, security from tenants <clears throat> or security for tenants? Security for roach tenants. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Toronto has very different living standards than... The U.S. I've found um, because they're prissy little bitch. No, they're wonderful people, but <laughs> we're so grateful to be here. <laughs> but they do tend to have higher standards of living than than I think middle class Americans do. <laughs> In what way? Well, I think I think when you look at, uh, at our apartment building, you know, Google search. Wind family, um, you know, West Lodge apartments, and the first things that come up are police actions and city actions against the apartment building and the family for uh, health problems. And I was going to say health and human services, but see, this is one of the things that, that I've been finding, as I, I mentioned before, like with our little coffee day, it's very hard for me to make jokes because so many of them have American. Uh, counterparts or, or American elements to them, such as oh, I think yeah. that was like the FDA. I was yeah, talking about yeah. the FDA or something like that. And I was like, well, those departments don't really exist here, but they do, but I don't know what they're called, so I just sound like a slow person, because I'm like somebody who just can't deliver a punchline anymore. But then, I really hate that. But That's... then Kevin said, he actually, Kevin the Canadian, mm -hmm. um, that's actually the surname of all Canadians. The um, Canadian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then said that he knew of the FDA but did not know what the Canadian version was called. And he works in, like, government. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's the same thing with the news we find in, in Canada. Mostly uh, politically, political talk is, is mostly about the United States, whatever, whatever silly things Mr. Trump is up to. And about how pretty Mr. Trudeau is. Oh, God, that calendar. Do you see the calendar? Do you all see the calendar? Uh, what is it called? My Canadian boyfriend. <laughs> it's it's Amazon top top one right now <laughs> as far as things you can buy is a calendar of Justin Trudeau. Well, there was nothing nothing quite like the that photo shoot of him and um, Macron and that rose 
Olive Garden in Paris overlooking. I bet it's in there. It's got to be one of the 12 months. Oh, I hope so. The, a lot of the, 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 the classic Justin Trudeau pictures are in there. For our American audiences, um, Justin Trudeau, who you probably know now because you've got buyer's remorse from Trump, <laughs> is, is the, uh, the PM of, of Cabana. <clears throat> and to all of you American people out there that are that are thinking like, wow, well, it's it's so wonderful to have a like a John F. Kennedy sort of figure, young and vibrant and and independent of the trappings of wealth and all that. Ah, I mean, just look at his daddy. I mean, oh, he's yeah, he's yeah. he's in a lineage in the same way that Kennedy started one too, or the Clintons, or the Bushes. I mean, political yeah. political power is is always dynastical. I think money and power. Oh, if you're raised in that, I mean, truly. Well, I mean, it's, it's yeah. gotta be hard to leave that kind of family business. This is how we can thank Will Smith for Jane Smith's uh, gender fluidity, <laughs> and and the the, the daughter, <laughs> the one who did uh, whip my hair back and forth. You know the song? Let's not repeat it. I whip my no, hair back and forth. I whip my hair back and forth. Yeah, well, during during her tour. <laughs> She actually shaved her head and said, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so That's the perfect ending. Yeah. Let's let's have a small clip of that and tack it on to the end of that video and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith comes like, all right, baby, you don't have to. You don't have to. I learned to count that, but now I see it. Yeah. So I found that um, when I first moved up here, it took me... It felt like America for like a good few months. It felt like America through the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and then like maybe, maybe like four to six months in, I got a bit of culture shock. Um, I think I'm ex I'm experiencing that a little earlier than you. Right. Yeah, I, I think you have been. <laughs> what, what, do, what do you notice that's different? Um, it is a little bit. It's more than just an accent. I think... I don't even notice the accent. I certainly do, but... They notice mine more. Hmm. Uh, I have had people just, I had a man in a fabric shop once. First thing he said was, what part of the States are you from? <laughs> you what? Stop trying that accent. Um, but, you know, just no question. Just, yeah. Uh -huh. They can spot it. Oh, yeah. Like, like, uh, like I was at the butcher <laughs> shop and I was asking how much sausage was and she says it in kilos and then immediately says or i mean for you in pounds <laughs> okay um i've i've noticed yeah so so i've noticed that they notice that i have an accent not so i mean i definitely notice theirs um and and also i don't know like no matter where we are because i mean parkdale is not like the the uh, most ritzy you know it's not an over the rhine of cincinnati by any stretch um it's it is, getting it is one closer. of the poorest neighborhoods or probably the poorest neighborhood of central toronto yeah which is not saying a lot no because we still found a, a working epson printer uh less than a block away yeah uh, people and... people throw away like large working flat screen tvs and just pick them up on the street yeah and, and randos have the uh the, the, those little library boxes that's not even a city oh, yeah. thing. They just they just put them up in their their front yard yeah yeah Toronto's very well read, very high education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's curious you notice the accent because it's the least Canadian city. I've I've heard Canadians call it the most American Canadian city. Yeah, they say that too. They say it's southern Canada, which it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is southern Canada, but that don't mean it's the south. Because uh, that's I think one thing that I've noticed too. That they, it's it's Canada is very very polite, but it's not very nice. That's, that's what I've been experiencing. And that's not necessarily all that fair, because, you know, you're living in a big yeah, I think, city. I think that is the big city thing. Yeah, and I, I, I've been wanting to read a lot more about expats uh, going, well, not even expats, just people moving from middle-sized cities to larger cities, like mm -hmm. New York. It's a near universal experience in this century. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's urbanization. Yeah, and it's it's, but, it's but I mean it, it would produce its own set of psychological issues. Mm -hmm. would be, I've not I've not read a good or really any any article addressing that specifically. There has to be. I figured I'd just go online and it'd be like a million studies done. Yeah, I mean, it's, especially it's, with college students it's moving a major, from major major 
thing that people go through. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, mean almost I, I everyone at some point. <clears throat> it's, I mean, I've, I've almost been calling it like a Goldilocks problem, you know. McPherson, this this town is too small. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto, this town is too big. Do it right. This town is too big. Come on, a little deeper. This town is too big. There you go. <laughs> and, and Cincinnati was, you know, more or less just kind of just right. Uh, but even looking at that, it was it was mostly neighborhood. Um, which is the same as this. So it's yeah. just trying to adapt to a new neighborhood. Just, I, I think Cincinnati was just right socially. Um, but, you know, it wasn't it wasn't going to be any good for my career and, and what I ended up focusing on. Mm-hmm. Um, but now maybe I focused on too specific a thing for the city I was in. But that's, that's what I did, and there were no jobs in it. Yeah. Now here they're, they're booming. Booming jobs. Boom all the jobs. All the jobs. You just got interviewed by the Toronto Star. Oh, shh. It's not out yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, this fucking thing will be edited in time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not out. It's supposed to be in tomorrow morning's edition. Yeah, no, it's, that's interesting, though. Um, <laughs> you know, in Cincinnati, I had a transportation blog. And uh, I don't want to say that no one read it. Certainly people read it. Um, and it, and it has generated its own amount of interest. But um, here we did a, a blog post on a transportation issue, very similar to what I had done in Cincinnati. You know, I did 100 of these in Cincinnati. We do one here. And, and now we have an exclusive with the star for an upcoming <laughs> article. So what have you been up to since you've been here? I have been... Um... <clears throat> doing a lot more computer stuff, playing with photos, yeah. writing, getting accustomed. What are you writing for? And writing for the www.mentallywoodacre.com blog oh. as, a, as a guest spot. All right. right yeah. So I, uh, uh, well, not much taxi. Why is that? Because um, I have no workshop and the laws are so different. So... Right now, I still feel like I'm on a scouting mission, so it is uh, extraordinarily frustrating because I'm not. I can't sell anything here, and I can't really do anything here. So I've been looking at. <laughs> that's that's the uh, that's the least positive way to put it. <laughs> so I've been looking at other art forms, uh, such as cooking. <laughs> um, He's a lovely cook. I've been working at it. There's a lot of a lot of fun things I've been learning about the chemistry of food. I mean, it's been a month off, sort of. Yeah. All right. So I've also been thinking a lot more about um, what what can be done in condensed spaces. Um, so workshops are definitely a thing. I've done a workshop so it's, far. It's a good thing you have fine motor control. I know. It is. Like lots of very small things. Yeah. I do have very fine motor control. So I have been I've been playing with the pen a lot more. Doing a lot more little sketches and drawings and stuff like that. But I've done a workshop at uh, the ADO, which is the Art Gallery of Ontario. Yeah, well, I was going to say the preeminent art gallery of Ontario. <laughs> for the, the uh, it is the art gallery. For the, uh, for the Del Toro exhibition, who is one of my favorite directors. Mm-hmm. So that was fun. Butterflies and, well, actually, moths. Did some moths. As you recall from uh, from the uh, Devil's Backbone, moths are uh, which is a film? or I'm sorry, Crimson Crimson Peak. Is a film? Yeah. yeah. By Del Toro. Okay. Yeah. He likes moths and automatons, hmm. as we also see in Crimson Peak. So so that that's 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 one other thing I've been thinking about too is is the uh, creation of automatons. We have a 15, well, a lying 15-story apartment building here. And I've been watching the pigeons do their bullshit mm-hmm. murmuration. Are you going to make a pigeon? Uh, I was thinking of trying to, figuring out Lock ways, pigeons? figuring out ways to, to mechanically reproduce a murmuration. Hmm. Now, if, if you you don't know what a murmuration is, basically it's the swarming behavior that you see very, very frequently in starlings, but pigeons too, um, and when you're in big cities. Now I won't go into the to the real depths of it because this is basically just kind of a, a fun little podcast of what we've been up to. But go to the Wikipedia page on murmuration, get better read. Oh, we should uh, we can just get a video out the off the porch and 
Yeah, I've been just staring. Post it on the post it on the on the oh, website yeah. now that we have. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've been thinking of, of, of tension springs, ways to replicate a murmurating flock if that's not redundant uh, through automaton methods. But anyway, so so these are the sorts of things that I that I can do that are small and here and still really wildly ambitious. How, how small is your flock going to be? Pigeons would be about uh, <laughs> oh, okay. about like a centimeter maximum. Okay. Yeah, probably. I mean, they, they wouldn't necessarily look like pigeons. They may actually look like flying wheels. That's why you want that. It's a murder ratio. Um, <clears throat> machine tool. <laughs> I don't want it just for one project, but yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's the idea of memoration and the, the, the kind of the mathematical principles behind how it works, mm -hmm. which <clears throat> which is complicated. And again, go to, just go to the Wikipedia page. But Look at that. We're in the big city, and you found something, some aspect of nature to inspire you. Of course. Right here. 